am here with Lev Nachman, a PhD candidate in political science at UC Irvine, who is currently doing his fieldwork in Taiwan. Lev, thanks so much for getting up early to talk to me today. Thank you for having me. So I'm curious about how coronavirus has affected you personally. You are currently in Taiwan on a Fulbright grant, but at least according to my knowledge of the situation, a couple months ago, Fulbright basically told all of their grantees around the world to come back to the United States. Uh, you decided to stay put in Taiwan. Um, so why did you decide to stay where you are rather than coming back to the US? Uh, so Fulbright Taiwan, uh, for a long time, tried to fight to allow for all Fulbrighters to stay in Taiwan. Um, because very fortunate for all of us, Taiwan has handled uh, the entire pandemic outbreak better than pretty much every other country has. Uh, and if there is a place on earth that is a fairly safe place to hide out in, it's it's probably Taiwan. We, ha we were getting like multiple emails a day from Taiwan Fulbright about, you know, whether or not we're allowed to stay, whether or not we have to go, this kind of back and forth they were having. Uh, and at first, that uh, they decided that we were allowed to stay. And then like it was something like days later that the Department of Education made like an executive order that regardless of where you were, if you were involved with Fulbright, like Fulbright was, was suspended worldwide, no matter what. And so uh, we got a very carefully worded email from Fulbright saying, we are obligated to tell you that the Department of Education says that you should go back home, but we can also tell you that it's not mandatory. And if you would like to stay in Taiwan, so long as you have a valid um, residency card and your visa is good, um, then you are technically allowed to stay. Um, but we still had to sign a document in like legalese that said we recognize we are technically breaking Fulbright's rules by deciding to stay here. So what is your life like now? Are you under stay-at-home orders? Are you allowed to leave your apartment? When you go outside, do you have to wear a mask? What, what does your life look like? Yeah, so, so it's, um, it's very strange at the moment because everyone in Taiwan uh, is still out and about, um, still takes beatings, still goes out. Uh, there's, there's almost, uh, I, the way I describe it is, is that Taiwan is currently at about like 30% paranoia. Uh, as opposed to like the rest of the world, which keeps it much higher, which is good. Uh, and, and Taiwan, uh, you have to wear a mask if you're on the subway or on a bus or any sort of public transportation. Uh, you get fined a lot if you don't have a mask. Um, every restaurant you go to, every cafe, there's someone at the door to take your temperature with like the forehead scanner. Wow. Uh, and they, you know, spritz your hands with, with hand sanitizer every place you walk into, no matter what. But restaurants are still um, operating as normal. They're okay. all still open. Everything yeah. is open. There is there is um, some some businesses were doing at home working, mm -hmm. um, but that ended uh, at least a week ago. That I think most of my friends who worked in offices are now all back in the office now. Um, and so you know, life has pretty much come back to to you know again like eighty percent normalcy here. Uh, which is very strange to watch as everything back in the United States, it's, it's, it's very much been like a, a, a reverse as, as things get, get better and better here. Things in the US seem to get worse and worse. So what do you think accounts for Taiwan's success in handling the coronavirus crisis? Uh, it, is, it is so closely linked to the experience with 2003 and SARS. SARS, SARS was really like the, um, the vault that a lot of countries here kind of needed in order to learn how to respond to a pandemic. Uh, so, you know, South Korea, Taiwan, um, Hong Kong, you know, these are places that didn't know how to respond well with SARS right away, but then learn. Uh, so when a pandemic like this happens, uh, there are protocols here and there are kind of, um, you know, just even within civil society, there's a memory of what it's like to live during a pandemic. Uh, and people take these kinds of social distancing issues seriously, or people here take wearing a face mask seriously and washing their hands seriously. Um, it also helps that Taiwan's uh, still current vice president, although almost out vice president, was also in charge of running the SARS response uh, during the crisis in 03. Really? Uh, 
so it, it, it's on Jiren. So, so it's very good to have, you know, people who have good medical experience who know how to respond to pandemics and take these things seriously in office because that can also help lead to your country responding in a productive way. Well, one of the other things that we've been hearing about concerning Taiwan on social media is Taiwan's relationship to the World Health Organization. Could you explain a little bit about what that controversy has been about? So depending on who is in charge in Taiwan, whether it's the, the Chinese Nationalist Party, the KMT, uh, or the Democratic Progressive Party, the DPP, uh, very much changes uh, the dynamic and the access that Taiwan has to international organizations. So under the KMT, Taiwan sometimes gets a little bit more access to international organizations. Uh, and usually when the DPP is in power, they get access to fewer and fewer. Uh, and the underlying reason for that is because of the PRC. So the PRC pretty much has a very, very heavy sway in international organizations because they will be able to dictate whether or not other countries can or will help places like Taiwan or whether or not they will continue to kind of exclude Taiwan. The DPP, uh, as, we, as we've seen, has been trying to use this pandemic as a moment to try to show the world that Taiwan can be a, you know, functioning, productive member to society, mm. um, which is what the PRC does not want. Uh, they would prefer that the rest of the world kind of maintain their image of Taiwan as this gray zone, non-country that doesn't really have much to offer except for something controversial uh, when it comes to discussing issues uh, and relations with China. Uh, but Taiwan has been very successful with what they're calling mask diplomacy, where because Taiwan's mask manufacturing capacity is so high right now, because things are so calm here and because things have been so well handled, that they're now able to send uh, literally millions of masks around the world each day. I think uh, there was an article um, that just came out uh, yesterday in uh, Nikkei Asian Review. Um, that said, I think Taiwan's making like 15 million masks a day and just able to send them uh, to, to whoever wants them. Uh, and that kind of good, like, you know, not only have we nailed handling the pandemic, but we're able to help others who need it is such good PR essentially for Taiwan uh, and such bad PR for anyone who kind of sides with the PRC on this issue by saying, you know, no, 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 we should exclude Taiwan, we should listen to what the PRC stance is, uh, because it, it's very hard to, to hate on Taiwan or hate the idea of Taiwan being a productive contributing member to, to global order when they're doing so well during a pandemic and are able to help. So speaking of the PRC, I'm sure you've been talking to your friends and colleagues what is the general perception on the ground in Taiwan about how other countries have been handling coronavirus, in particular, the PRC um, or the United States? Uh, two, two very different uh, responses, depending if you're talking about the PRC versus the United States. Uh, here, memory is, is still very, very fresh and will probably make stay this way of associating this entire outbreak as being the fault of the PRC. Hmm. Uh, because Taiwan saw this entire thing progress from like day one in Wuhan, where we started hearing rumors of some sort of virus, to it escalating within China, to it escalating within East Asia. Um, Taiwan saw the entire process happen. And so here the, the memory is going to be that this is the PRC's fault, that this has spread so far and so quick. And for, for lack of a better phrase, I don't think there's a lot of thought about what's going on in the United States because uh, I think Taiwan has been, especially in the last couple of weeks, really focused on just trying to help whichever country is willing to give Taiwan the time of day. Mm -hmm. uh, and whoever wants masks and support from Taiwan, that's usually who Taiwan is, is, is focused and thinking about. Um, so most, most countries in the news these days in Taiwan tend to be countries that are reaching out to Taiwan for, for uh, help or who, for who Taiwan is able to send masks uh, and resources to. Well, thanks, Lev, for talking with me today, and I hope you stay healthy and productive in Taiwan. Thanks, everyone.